Michael. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna show you guys the thickness of the tube, and so I was like, I need that sucker. So I wanna show him how. It. So, what's up, man? This is Sam from Bingo Moto, and this is my uh, helper assistant, fucking all star Val. Valvini. <laughs> Anyways, uh, this is gonna be the first instructional video of uh, me building the frame. I don't have any editing skills, I don't have any recording skills, so what you see is gonna be raw footage. Kinda of raw. I might edit a couple of things if I mess up. But this is it. This is what you guys get. I'm gonna try to do my best on uh, I'm gonna do my best on doing the best job that I could do making the best job recording this video. Did you get that? Perfect. Um, so anyways, we're gonna start off by uh, um, the, the tube. So the pipe, what is this, this tube? So the tube I go to IMS, it's a local uh, a metal supply store. And it, I, I started off with a 16 wall, but I found out right away, where's that piece? I found out right away that uh, it was too thin for this project, this specific project. My goal was to keep them as light as possible, these Dingo motors, the, these little mini bikes. But um, yeah, 16 wall alumina, they, it, it held until it broke. So here's an example of what happens when it did have a hole. My mistake was making a hole so they create a, a soft spot. Let me uh, get it close to you guys. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it just snapped. So that's what I used to use before. But now the ones that I use for production are the eighth inch wall. And they're one eighth inches, eighth inch wall, uh, 6061 T6 aluminum. So you guys are getting that aerospace stack. Aerospace grade. Yeah, aerospace grade. If you guys want to use a. Uh, Anything else, you guys can use a, a steel if you guys want. Uh, I use aluminum because I want to be different. Not only that, but they're lighter. The, the frames are significantly lighter and and um, you can do a lot to aluminum. You could anodize it, powder coat it. You can just make it look cool. That's why I chose aluminum. Um, so yeah, so like I said, I use a eighth inch, cool. eight, eighth inch wall. Here, I'm gonna that you guys could see that boop so eighth inch wall and one inch tube perfect so after that so what I ended up doing is that, uh, to make the production faster this is enough what I have here is enough for one frame right mm -hmm. one frame so one frame if hey, you bring me a little bit I'm gonna show you guys so each frame I, I, I make it in, put this over here. I make it in, it's six pieces that make the frame itself. So when I put it together, it's six different pieces. I'm not an expert tube bender. So the first frame that I ever built, like I said, if you guys do it at home, if you guys try one out and it doesn't work out, that's fine, man. Like, like the first frame that I, I made, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show you guys. And I'm saving this just for uh, like to know that I went from this to the actual mini bikes that I made, but it takes practice. But what I what, what I thought about is just dumbing it down and make it easy for people at home to be able to make these things. Because to get these uh, these uh, radiuses correct and accurate with a Chinese tube bender, because that's what I got. I bought a Amazon manual tube bender. It, yeah, those things have a lot of slack. They're not accurate at all. The one I had was not accurate at all. And it gave me this when I when I couldn't make it out of two pieces. So I wouldn't recommend that. I mean, if you're cool, if you, if you have the tools to do it, go ahead. But if you're at home and you don't have the tools and, you, if, and if you just want to buy one of those manual ones that I got, I would not recommend this. It was a pain in the ass. But what I ended up doing, I, uh, I was able to dumb it down and make it easier for everybody to do it at home. Or, if, yeah, so like I said, if you have one of those two benders or you know somebody that has one, you'll be able to do this, the specific way that I make them. So, and I'll show you guys the bender. It has a little modification. 
Yeah, Beautiful. that's a slight modification, but I'll show you guys the vendor so you guys can see which one I got. I'll try to, I'm trying to do the aff affiliate program through Amazon so I can get a little bit of money back. Not that I'm greedy, but you know, a little bit of, a little bit of money to buy more tools doesn't hurt. So, um, but if I can't get it done, I'm just gonna tag it on the link or on the description below. So, to make the frame, I ended up getting the, I'm gonna show you guys around the shop and what, what I actually did. So, here, I'm gonna pick you guys off this thing right here. So what, what I ended up doing was this, uh, if you guys follow me on Instagram, this was the very first one that I ever built. I didn't use the pack, I actually used the, uh, Milwaukee batteries. I would not recommend Milwaukee batteries because you will kill your packs. You would, you'll just, uh, I think the life of them will be like half the, the, the amount of life that they're supposed to be. I ended up killing four of my packs doing this. I did run it for two years, but I that was the very, very first one I built. And then it was this one, but I, these two combined just killed four of my packs and not the cheapy ones. They, they were the $250 ones. So yeah, I mean, if you guys want to do it, go ahead. But uh, you guys have been warned, warned. <laughs> but like I said, the geometry for the build, the frames I build right now came from this mini bike right here, and this is where where I drew everything out. So I got a little um, engineering. I put my engineering hat on and just drew all the measurements out. Drew the how, how far I had to bend um just got crazy with it you know make sure i noted everything put everything in there like i said put the tube here and roll it down you know put some notes on there so i won't forget but um i use this kind of like if if one of the bends is not lining up i use this i always go back to this this is like my map to the frame that i build right now i and uh same with the handlebar so that's the handlebar right there. So that's how I do it. But what I'm gonna do, I wanna make it easier for you guys. I'm gonna give you guys all the measurements so you guys could stop the video and and write them down on the tube or when you when you guys are building yours. Look at that. Damn, dude, you fit in there. Pretty handsome, dude. Pretty handsome on camera. All right, so. So what I ended up doing, I made templates that showed me the bender. So I guess I'm gonna have to show you the bender next. Here, let me see if I'm in the center of the camera. So quality, oh yeah, I am. So the bender, the tube bender has like a loop that holds onto the tube and then the, it has two uh, dies that roll on the, on the tube to get, give it the radius that you need. So I mark where that loop that holds onto the tube goes and I, and I mark the, the actual uh, distance of the die. So what I, what I do pretty much is butt it up to, and I, have, I numbered them to know which one it is. So there's three parts in the, in the frames and I started from the top, middle, and bottom section. So I labeled them one, two, and three. And that's what I put here. So this one's number three. So that, I don't know if you could see it. I just punched it. You can't really see it, but it's a number three. So what I ended up doing was, uh, damn, you should smile, bud, buddy. You should smile. If you want to smile, you look a little too serious there. <laughs> oh, that's your normal face. Um, yeah, so I put numbers just to know which one's which. And like I said, this is the this is gonna be the bottom part of the frame. So this 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 is actually gonna bend kind of like towards towards the top and towards the center of the frame and this is where the battery tray goes but like I said I made these to make life a lot easier and I'll, I'll sh I'm gonna show you guys what's the distance of each one and what's this distance and I'll probably use one edge from this edge down so you guys can get these two measurements right here and this measurement right here so when you guys do it at home you guys have all that dialed in you guys won't, won't have to guess and you guys will have the the measurements that I use for my frames so that's that. So like I said, I, I made one for each one, each section. Each, each section. And there's only, there's four, including the handlebar, but the frame uses six pieces. Three of those are the same. And I do use, if you guys notice the frames, we, sh we didn't cut the sleeves. 
Whoopsie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess you can start doing that right now if you want to. We use leaves in between the tubes and and um, what that does it allows us the flexibility to put it on the jig and and not have any tension points and once uh, at least what I've noticed when I'm welding these things if you don't have tension points it uh when you weld it or because I do clamp everything but if you don't have tension points your frames are always going to be nice and straight because if say one of them's higher than the other one and you force it down to where it's supposed to be and then you weld that since it's aluminum it's a soft material it's going to want to bring it up so now you have a crooked frame so by sleeving everything it allows me and using my map the one i drew it, it, it allows me to make pretty pretty much pieces that just fit right where they're supposed to be and i just clamp everything down just, so it won't work during the welding process so every frame that i make it's it's pretty much almost true every time um so yeah that's why i sleeve them and then to sleeve them, you know what, since before you cut them, show them the sleeve. So to sleeve them, I use a one and a quarter, one and a quarter uh, inch round tube. Here, I guess we're going to have to get a little bit closer. So it's a one and a quarter round tube with eighth inch wall. So what that does, it gives me a one inch uh, hole in the center. The only... The only downside with this is that this specific tube, if you get uh, the 6061T6, this is, it says that it's one inch, but it's not one inch. It's, it's not a true one inch. So when it comes down to it, you're gonna need some specialty tools just to open it up. Or if you have a buddy that has a lathe and he could actually hone that out, hone that open, that, that would be cool. I'm gonna show you guys the two tools that I use to open that hole up and make it a true one inch. If I could find him, I'll hear this. So, I normally use this guy, and it's a uh, it's a flute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What's it called? The eight flute? Reamer. Oh, it's a reamer tool. What's a flute? Flute? Yeah. Because you're being drilled. Oh shit. Anyways, apparently I don't know my the name of my tools, but yeah, this is a reamer tool. If I was right, that's why I have you around, dude. Cause, but uh, it's a uh, yeah, you could just buy it. I bought this at McFadden's. It's your it's a local hardware store, and they're not they're not cheap. I'll tell you that right now. This thing was one hundred and twenty five bucks. So um, and I did have to modify it to be able to throw it on my on my lathe. But if you don't have this tool, you could always use the this guy if you have a lathe, you have a lathe. You can't doesn't focus anyways i don't know if you guys could see it yeah yeah but you need a yeah i guess you could use a drill bit but that's gonna damage the nice damage oh, the oh to hone it and it doesn't work i tried it no i tried everything guys and like i said i bought honing tools here let me show you everything that i bought So I tried to make that fit. I bought honing tools, scotch brides, everything. And the best things that work, the things that work the best are these two guys. So if you're at home, if you're trying to make that happen, if you have a buddy that has a lathe or anybody that has a lathe, use these two guys. You're gonna, this does not work. The aluminum sticks to it and yeah, it's just a pain in the butt. <laughs> How do you know this thing? I even bought one of these, and it didn't work. So, or even if you have your own method to hone in the tube. Yeah, man. That's another thing, too, why I'm uploading these videos. Yeah, you know what? You're right. Yeah, so if you fight, figure out a different way of honing your tubes, if you figure out a different way of doing this, dude, let me know, man. This, this is exactly why I'm uploading the videos, because I want to show how I do it, but... It would be cool to have other people show show me their the way they do it or they would do it on the comment section or just videos of it. Like check this guy out, how he does it or whatever. So like I said, this, I'm just starting. Well, I'm not just starting this, but a lot of experience after a lot of experimenting, this is what I came up with. But you know, if you guys just have a garage 
or have just don't have the tools that I have because I'm fortunate enough to have a lathe. I'm fortunate enough to have be ha have access to these tools or be able to buy these tools. But if, see, if you guys don't have a lot of money and you guys figure a different way out, kind of like I said with the drill bit or something different, uh, yeah, man, let us know. That'll be cool. That'll be cool to know. So yeah, I want to show you guys the bender too. So I think I'm gonna do a series. This is a uh, this. Is I kind of want to make these only like 10 minutes long, so it's probably way over 10 minutes now, 15 minutes, so I'm, I'm not that far on. So yeah, so this is going to be part one, let's just say that. Introduction. Yeah, this is part one. The last thing I'm going to show you guys is the bender. So the bender, and we're still dialing in the shop. It's not going to be like this. We're trying to clear everything out, make this thing a, a nice... Um, what do you call that freaking yeah production line so this is my crazy bender like i said i uh modified it a little bit uh i had some parts laying around and i had a, a hydraulic uh cylinder laying around i work at a spot where they throw these things away so i i, I refurbished the motor and and this thing they welded it with metal and it's uh it's a commercial cold press company, so they can't use that anymore. They're gonna recycle it, so I was like, Psh, I could use that. Same with the box. But um, the main thing here that I wanna show you guys is this thing. This is the actual um, piece that I bought off of Amazon for, I think it was 150 bucks. So it's called a manual pipe bender, and uh, it comes with a handle. I ended up cutting the handle to slide it onto this to make this to make this work but yeah before the first frame i ever built was manually with this thing um since i'm since i was going to do production and i couldn't afford a, an actual pipe bender i just decided to make my own so yeah so that's the bender and like i said that bend the two bender comes with a bunch of dice so you guys could i mean if you guys are bending into something else it does give you diff different options that you could actually choose from but yeah, so yeah, that's the basic concept of the frame. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm probably gonna do a series. This is series one, this, this, uh, this is probably gonna be the longest video that I make. Oh, cool, Val brought the bike. Okay, so this is, this is, like I said, I label these things one, two, and three. So three different parts and I, I sleeve them. Sleeve, sleeve, sleeve. And then that front, this whole front part sleeved. That's something else too. I use a jig for that too. So, but uh, but yeah. So this is a uh, this is pretty much the intro to building yourselves one of these things. So yeah, part two coming soon. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.